We're in the faith series called Grit. Grit. Y'all scream that at me. Grit. 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 Yeah. We're in the faith series called Grit. And um, I believe that my goal today is to pull you all into a more meaningful way to use your faith. A more meaningful way to use your faith. There is a scheme, obviously, that we would reserve, preserve our faith for merely just things. And I do believe that that's for you. I believe in faith that that is for you. But I want to argue that our faith is for that even the more. All right? All right? Scream at me, grit. grit. All right? I don't got no notes. My phone just died. It's in my pocket. Y'all pray for me. I was in my room preaching and my phone died. So I forgot to put it on the charger and all of that. But it's okay because it's in my heart. Um, let's do... Uh, Let's do Hebrews 10 and 22. You got your Bibles, you got your phones. Open it up to Hebrews 10 and 22. I believe this is NASB. NASB. It says, let us draw near. The NLT says, let's go right into his presence. With a sincere heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Next verse. Let us hold fast. Somebody say grit. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful just for a few seconds could you just give God praise for his faithfulness that the thing that we are pursuing he is full of he's full of faith he's faithful 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 and let us not consider how to stimulate one another to love and somebody say and to good deeds deeds I want to preach to you all today, uh, faith by the water, faith by the water, faith by the water. Touch your neighbor and say faith Faith. by the water. water. You all can take your seats. Faith by the water, faith by the water, faith by the water. I want to pose a question. What is faith for? Is faith for houses? Three bedroom, four bedroom. Five bedroom, six bedroom, y'all love that. Mansions, crown molding. How about crown molding? Is faith for crown molding? <laughs> is, is faith for uh, cars, Bentleys, and Maseratis? Is faith for, I don't know, pools in the backyard? And it's hot in Texas. We need that. Some of y'all walked in here a little weary because the sun drags you in. It's hot out here. I get it. But is that what faith is reserved for? Is that what our faith is? Is that what our faith is for? Yeah. All right, y'all like Devon, you trolling? We know that faith—the I mean, faith is not just for those things. All right, so let's go a little deeper. Is faith for us to believe now in marriage? Some of us, some of us, some of the singles have been waiting years and years, seasons and seasons. And you got to get on Instagram and watch everybody else jump the broom. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's hard. And I believe in faith that if it's God's will for you, it will happen. It will. It will. But is that what faith is reserved for? Is, okay, that ain't deep enough. Is faith for believing for a child? I know that there are many who are, who are doing the work of the Lord. And in their union, they are believing God for a child. And season after season, they got to watch multiple people uh, start legacy. And they're waiting. They're waiting. And I believe in faith. I do. I believe in faith that you will have it. I do. I do. I, be- I partner with you in faith. But is that what faith is? is reserved for 
I think that in this season, that's real churchy, in this season, <laughs> we have to recalibrate, reimagine what we use our faith for. We have to dig deeper to find out what the Lord wants us to use our faith for. First thing you need to know is that faith is according to the will of God. I don't got nobody. Faith is according to the will of God. You won't say nothing because we feel like we can manipulate faith for our will. But faith is according to the will of God. And then it's not just according to the will of God, Eric, but faith is according to the way. You got to get that. It's not just the will, but it's the way. It's not just the will, but it's the way. It's not just the, the will, the promise that's way out there. The prophecy that you got, the word that you got. Pastor Show met you in the lobby and she prophesied to you. And you believe in God for it. And it's way over there. But it's not just for the will, but it's for the way. It is, it is the, the, um, the light unto my path. The light unto my path. I'm over here and I get a word and he lights my path and I can see in the distance what the Lord wants to do. And I believe in faith for it. But he's not just a light unto my path, but he's a lamp unto my feet. It's the will and the way. The will and the way. Faith is according to the will and the way. And you got to be careful because if you don't declare, if you don't name it, by the will and the way, you'll set yourself up for disappointment. You'll set yourself up for hardship. You'll set yourself up for being angry with God, having enmity with your pastor and your church. Because you named it, yeah, but not by the will and the way. The will and the way. The will and the way. Let's go to the text. Because I don't got no notes, so he's going to have to show. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 22. Come on. Hebrews 10 and 22. It's there. It's there. As soon as it's see. Okay, there we go. Let us draw near. Stop there. The NLT says, let us go right into the presence of God. This is pivotal. It's, it's premier. It is the substratum for your faith. The idea that you can go right into, help me preach God, that you can go right into the presence of God. You can go right into the presence of God. The presence is his presence. His presence is what develops us. His presence is what shapes us. His presence is what molds us. It's the presence of God. We are sitting here beneficiaries of the presence of God. It's not a service that we encounter in the Rock Church where we don't see his presence. It, it doesn't matter how it starts. We know that by the, end, by the time we leave this building, we are going to be overwhelmed. Hey with his presence and I don't take that lightly hey because he is not always manifesting in every place his omnipresence might be in every place but his manifested presence is not in every place and I believe that that's the reason that we don't always see miracles and we don't see wonders and there are those who don't have the faith to believe it they think you're weird because they don't know his presence oh his presence it's his presence I was teaching my son he's 13 years old Dalen I teaching my son, Dalen, the gospel. He's 13 now, and he can understand more weightier matters. And so I said, oh, Dalen, I got to teach you the gospel. I can give you things. I could. And I will even uh, pay for your tuition, your college tuition. I'll do that. And, and I can give you, uh, set up some accounts for you. But the greatest thing I'll ever give you is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so because he's 13, I had to figure out a creative way to tell him. So I came with my little Sunday school anointing, and I said, Dalen, the Bible starts with a dilemma. It starts with a dilemma. God now creates the earth, and he creates man from the dirt, Adam, and he places man inside of the Garden of Eden. When he places man inside of the Garden of Eden, he puts all of these things, watch me, all of these things around him, things that he could manage. He didn't have to work for but he could manage things, streams, things, trees, things, provision, fruit, things, food, things, all of these things around him. And he said, I need you to be able to manage these things. And so I need you to have a help me. Here comes Eve. Hey, Eve, what's going on, Eve? What up? 
It comes Eve, Eve's here now, and we're here in our union to manage all of these things. Well, here comes the serpent. The serpent comes, and the serpent does something very, 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 very weird. The serpent coming the, in the opposition, in the opposition of Christ, he's coming, you know, and what he does weird is he does not give Eve the opposite of what God says. I always thought that was crazy. He doesn't come and, and, and give her a, a complete lie. No, he just twists one little word. God says, if you eat of this tree, you'll die. Serpent says, you will not surely die. You will not surely. Come on, y'all do it. You will not surely. I heard y'all. That's on tape. They, I'm going to tell y'all people. You will not surely, surely die. He, uh, it's weird because he doesn't give him the opposite of the truth. But he comes real, real, real close to it. And from that, Eve and Adam are now exiled out of Eden. I said, Dalen, he's brilliant. He's smart, all A's. He's brilliant. I said, Dalen, what is the tragedy of Adam and Eve now being exiled out of Eden? He says, Dad, I can see him imagining it. It was the birds and the beauty, the, the trees and the, and the streams, so many, the four streams. It was the, the gold or maybe, or maybe the, all of the resources. And I said, Dalen, that's all of these things. They're good. They're wonderful. They're, that's amazing. I believe God wants it for us. But the tragedy of Adam and Eve being exiled out of Eden is not the things. But is that, that they are now out of the presence of God. If you're going to understand, Dalen... The gospel of Jesus Christ, you got to understand the premier thing is that God always wanted us in his presence. It was his intent. He wants us in his presence. The things are cool. That's wonderful. We, we love those. But it's about his presence. Now, Adam and Eve are now outside of the presence of God. And for chapter and chapter and book and book the children of Israel about to be in a little bit but the people of God are having to go through this season of something always being in between them and the presence how do I know the Bible says that he put a angel on the east side of the Eden with flint with fiery swords and then we walk down into the Israel or the children of Israel being in uh, the wilderness and he is now having to teach them how to approach, how to enter the presence of God. Why? Because there's a veil in between. There's always something now in between us and the presence of God. Always something in between us and his presence. And so God concocts a plan. He says, my original intent was always for you to be in my presence. My, my plan is not that you die. My plan is that I bring you with me, reconcile you back to me so that you can be in my presence. And so he concocts a plan. He says, all right, this is what I'll do. I'll teach you how to sacrifice to at least have enough leverage to just experience me. And so now you got to slaughter a lamb. You got to kill a goat. You got to butcher a bull. Devon preached with power. You got to slaughter a lamb. You got to kill a goat. You got to butcher a bull. The Bible says in Hebrews, in this very passage up above, that uh, the priest had to stand it daily, always having to sacrifice over and over and over and sacrifice over and over and over. And the Bible says that no matter how many times they sacrificed, that it could not take away the sins. Yeah. It could not take away their sins. And so Jesus, here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. The Bible says in the, in the volume of the book. Here comes Jesus. And Jesus now comes to take away all of our sins. Here's, here, let me step in the parenthetic here. The priest had to sacrifice daily over and over and over and over. Jesus sacrifices one time. He saves us one time. And we're still being saved today. This is the kind of salvation that transcends through epochs. This is the kind of salvation that transcends through days and months. I'm trying to build your faith because you might have you messed up, but I'm telling you that he's still saving us today. 
One time, one time, one time. The one hit a quitter. <laughs> one time, one knockout. One time, one time, one time. He saved us from our sins. And now we have a right into the presence of God. I know you thought I was lost. We have a right <laughs> into the presence of God. Let us draw near with a sincere. Stop. Sincere. That word in the Greek is aletheinos. Aletheinos. Aletheinos is true. Let me teach you. I'm coming. I promise you. Aletheinos is true. That's what it means, true. And, and, and it's truth with a sincere heart. The first thing you need to know about faith, or the second thing maybe, is that the enemy is after your truth. Y'all tired. The enemy, Satan, is after your resolve. The enemy is after your truth. You think it's about your money, but he don't want your money. He don't want your house. He don't want your cars. The enemy is after your truth. He's after your resolve. He's after your settlement. He's after your truth. That's what he is. He's after your truth. He's after your truth. You got you to gotta know that he is after your truth. And that's why you got to be very, very, very skeptical, especially when it comes to the faith of false doctrine. Because the enemy is after your truth. Remember, in the garden, he does not come with lies, big old bold lies. No, he comes as close as he can to the truth. I'll get as close as I can, and I'll live right up under the truth. You got to be, you gotta be, you gotta be vigilant, and you got to pay attention. Because if you think he's all the way over here, and the truth is over there, you'll miss him. If you bore, if you board up, border up yourself and you stone up your, your, your things over here, you'll miss him because you're leaving too broad of a space for him to get to. You cannot, he's not over here. He's right, right next to the truth. Sitting, sitting right next to the truth. It's, it's like Jesus' story. You know, he, uh, Jesus had multitudes, all of the thousands, and then there were the 70, the 72 he laid his hands on. And then there was the, the 12. Judas wasn't in the multitude all the way over there. Judas wasn't, Judas wasn't in the, the 70, 72 in some versions. But Judas was in the 12. Right, right next to, right next to the truth. Lodging itself right next to the truth. Making his home, home right next to the truth. False doctrine. That's false doctrine. False doctrine. False doctrine. It, it lodges itself right next to the truth. It ain't the thing that you hear on Instagram that is so far away from what you believe. Don't be distracted. No. Uh-uh. It's the thing that sounds so close. So close to the truth. And so the enemy's design is, I don't know if I'm using this scripture too early. The enemy's design is to, to have you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. And all these things will be added. That's what he wants you to use your faith for. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. And all these things. And what it happens is the first, the prerequisite, God's will gets dumbed down. And the thing that you reserve your faith for is all these things. But that's just all these things. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me pull back your, let me pull back your anxiety because some of the things that you're confessing, you're confessing in anxiety because you don't believe that you'll have it. That's just all these things. That's all that is. All these things. The house, all these things. The cars, all these things. That's all it is. All these things. What you believe in him for? The business, all these things. All these things. All these things. All these things. That's all it is. All these things. All these things. All these things. I'll plow through. All these things. All these things. What you believe in him for? The house, the car? No. Uh, the marriage? All these things. The matter, all these things, all these things, the business, the, the, the entrepreneur, all these things, the CEO, the one to invest in what you believe, that's all these things, all these things. You got to be careful because false doctrine are getting so close to the truth that it'll have you declaring things in anxiety because all these things is his responsibility. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness is yours. You better focus, 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 focus. Focus. If you want grit, if you want grit, and you want gritty faith, you got to focus. Focus. It's not the things. It's not the things. And I believe you'll have it. You'll have it. It's not the things. All these things. False doctrine. False doctrine gets its roots in America. Watch me. You can sit down. False doctrine gets its roots in America. 
One of the earliest uh, mentions is uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, that's where I'm from. Y'all clap for Charleston. I know you ain't never been there. You better clap, clap, for, my, clap for my city. <laughs> clap for Charleston. In Charleston, we do two things very well. The first thing that we do is um, uh, we got great culture, and we talk different. Look it up, Gullah Gullah Island. Binya, binya, y'all remember? Yeah, that's Charleston. Uh-huh. We talk different. And we know how to cook. Woo, we know how to cook. And the thing that we specialize in is shrimp and grits. Oh, shrimp and grits. I love it, shrimp and grits. We do grits well, we do. I know, come out of Texas. We do grits well, we do. We do, we do. We do shrimp and grits. We do uh, scallops and grits. We do blue crab and grits. We do uh, uh, fried fish and grits, catfish and grits. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The only thing we don't do with grits is put sugar in it. I don't got no church in here. I don't got no church in here, but y'all better stop preaching that heresy. False doctrine. False doctrine. Apostle Mac, it's false doctrine. That's what it is. It gets so close to the truth. It's almost there. Your grit's almost there, but it got too much sugar in it. Y'all better stop that diabetes mess. All right, y'all, come back, come back, come back, come back. We in church. Y'all don't get me in trouble. Apostle, it was them. It was them, Apostle. It was them. <laughs> the second thing, come back, come back, y'all. The second thing, you joke for a little bit and then you come back out, all right? The second thing <laughs> is history. We are famous for history. Here's why. Because over 60% of the Africans that came to America came to the Carolina shores. 40% of those came to the actual port of Charleston. If you go to Charleston right now, you'll see that we, we still have the slave market. They sell pocketbooks on it now. Disrespect. They sell pocketbooks on it now, but we still have the slave market. We, all of our neighborhoods are called plantations. It's still very much, it's very much rooted in the soil, this, this idea. And I know, I know, I know that people in college told you that your gospel and Christianity is whitewashed, but the truth is that the colonists did not even want us to have the gospel. Did you know that? They didn't even want us to have the gospel. Here's why. Because false doctrine gets its roots in your poverty and your vulnerability. Watch me. Somebody say poverty. poverty. Vulnerability. vulnerability. They said they didn't want the slaves to get the gospel. They didn't want to give them the truth for the, the, the risk that they would believe that they were equal to them. And so the colonists concoct the plan and they say, this is what we'll do. We'll give you the gospel. But we'll twist it, and we'll chisel at it, and we'll adjust it, and we'll, we'll change the heading, and we'll, we'll, we'll finagle it and move it around for the agenda of slavery. That's what false doctrine does. It just adjusts it and changes it and twists it around for the agenda of slavery. Here's why. Because of people that do not know their designation are vulnerable to slavery. If you don't know who you are, if you, I thought we was at the Rock Church. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. Oh, y'all still not here. Okay, okay. God died for our sins. He went on the cross. He came down off of the cross and he was the perpetuation of our sins. And so he doesn't see us that way. He sees us in Christ's image. Our designation. I am a son and I am a daughter. I'm a son and I'm a daughter. And I'm a son and a daughter of a God who has everything. And so I don't beg like the heathens do. I don't beg because I am not a slave. I'm a son and a daughter. And so here we go. False doctrine. I want you to spend all your time in prayer. In the name of faith. Begging for things. Begging for things. I've seen it. I lived it. Okay. It's okay. I lived it. I live the Pastors Williams. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know those teachings. Begging for things, spending 40 minutes before church, professing in faith, 
Thanks, 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 thanks. It's a scheme to keep you out of his presence. The Bible says that when we ask, we ask in faith, knowing help, that he who we ask is well able. I said well able. Well able. You got to pay attention. It's not that we don't get the things. We're going to get those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's ours. That's ours. But we get it from our designation. Not from slavery. It's the idea of subjugation. Subjugation. Subjugation is for me to exert dominance and control over you by dangling things in front of you that your soul desires. I'll push you down because you don't know your designation. And I'll dangle things in front of you. Dangle things in front of you. Dangle things in front of you. I'll let you sit in that. Dangle things in front of you. I'm, I'm saying because I gotta get that out of you. I gotta get that, I gotta get you to a place where you where you prophesy, where you pray, and you preach in faith, but from your designation. From your designation, from the place that God has put you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give me um Matthew 6 and 24. Matthew 6 and 24. When you subject yourself to slavery, you always end up under a master. And you're saying, slavery is gone a long time ago. I don't have no master, but you do. You do. You, will all, you always have a master. 24 says, 6 and 24 says, no one can serve. No one can devote themselves to. No one can worship. No one can give their life to. No one can give their time to and their heart to. Two masters. You can't do that. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Eh, God and wealth, poor translation. Another translation says God and money. Eh, poor translation. The truth is, the KJV says God and, y'all church, mammon. Right? I remember? Mammon. But they translated it to wealth and they translated it to money because they did not realize the origin of this word, mammon. 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 Mammon is uh, derived from a post-classic uh, Latin term, right? It's, it's derived from mammon, right? But mammon, is not, he doesn't get his origins there. It's also derived from Hellenistic Greek. Now, y'all know, come on now, Apostle Duhart is our pastor. Greek, New Testament, Greek, Sparta, 300, Greek, right? <laughs> Greek, okay? But that's not its origin, right? It, uh, it derives in its most emphatic form from Aramaic. Aramaic. In Aramaic, it is mammon. Mammona. Mammon. It's, it's wealth. It's provision. It is money. It is possessions. But it's mammon. Mammon. And that is still not where it gets its origins. It comes from a Syriac dialect. In Syria, it was an actual god. It's an actual deity. In other words, mammon is money, but mammon is a demon. Mammon, mammon. Mammon lurks and he sits up under wealth. It's not, it's not money, it's not wealth, but he sits up under and he lurks up under wealth. And then he lurks up under possessions. And then he's waiting to pounce up under, okay, y'all don't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, okay, all right. Well, mammon sits up under the promises of God. Yeah, uh-huh. All of them promises that you got, the things that you believe in God for, Mammon lurks right next to it. Mammon is sitting right up under the things that you believe in God for, waiting to pounce. Why? Because Mammon knows that sometimes God promises things and he doesn't deliver it right then and there. And so Mammon comes to present you false doctrine, to offer you another way. That's Mammon. 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 I'm going to offer you an alternative. Mammon. I'll wait and see how many weeks it takes, how many days it takes, how many months it takes so I can offer you an alternative. How do I know? Abraham. Abraham. 
Abraham, Abraham gets a promise from God. God says, Abraham, I will give you legacy. From the, like the grains of the sand, I will multiply all of your loins, all of your uh, people, and even like the stars in the sky. I'll multiply your legacy. I will, I will. But the problem with this is Abraham don't have any kids. Abraham doesn't have any kids. And also Abraham is so old that his members ain't working. <laughs> Abraham's members ain't working. And also his wife is so old that she's having some issues. But Abraham on the first day believes God. He's going to do it. I don't have any, I don't have any kids, but he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. And then the first day goes by. He's going to do it. Year go by, he's going to do it. Months go by, he's going to do it. Year, years go by, he's going to do it. Months and days go by, he's going to do it. Hours go by, he's going to do it. 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 I know, I know, he's going to do it. He can do it. He can, he can do it. He, oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And right here. It's where most of us start to let go of our designation. Right here, that's, that's where it is. And this is where Mammon comes to creep in. Mammon. Mammon. I'll offer you another way. And so if you look in the Bible, I don't have any notes or we can't go there. But if you look in the Bible, uh, uh, Mammon comes to whisper to Sarah. Remember the serpent whispered to who? Mammon comes to whisper to Sarah. And Mammon says, Sarah... Tell Abraham that he can use your handmaiden Hagar. Because Mammon doesn't come to oppose God's will. He comes to offer you another way. Come here. Come here. Come here. He comes to offer you another way. He comes to offer you another way. He comes to offer you another way. As soon as it starts taking too long, he comes to offer you another way. As soon as you start getting weary in your believing, he's coming to offer you another way. That's why the Bible says, hold fast. Hold fast in full assurance of your faith. You got to hold fast. You got to hold fast. You got to get in the game and you got to get some grit. You got to hold fast. You got to hold every day, every month. Hey, I'm still believing what the Lord wants. I'm still believing his will and I'm believing his way. Because every day, I'm trusting him for daily bread. Slow down, Devon. I'm trusting him for daily bread. I'm trusting him for his sustenance today. Manna, yeah. I'm trusting him for the hours that I breathe. I'm trusting him for the months that I live. Every day for his way. For his way. For his way. Abraham did not get a suggestion that was opposed to his will, to God's will. Abraham got a suggestion that would offer him another way. Another way. Jesus said, I am the way. I feel that thing. The truth and the life. I am the way. I am the way. You might not know all of the details, but what you can rest assured in, hold on. I am the way. I am the way. Live on do Live on sword. Live on live on do live on da. I am the way. I am the way. The way is Jesus. Okay, that's old school. Y'all boy. The way is Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. And no man, hey, can come to the Father but by him. Hey, he's, he's Jesus. He's Jesus the Christ. Jesus our Savior. Jesus the way. Mammon comes to offer you another Jesus. Another Jesus. Another Jesus. It's not way far off. If you, if you don't miss it. Because it's not, it's not coming in the, I don't know who made up the devil in a big old red suit with a tail and horns. It's not like that. That's not, that's not what it is. But he comes real close, real near to offer you another Jesus. Let's work. Pilate is, is, is over the Roman rule in Israel. And he presents to the Jews two people. On one corner... He has Jesus the Christ. And on the other side, he has a man named Barabbas. Barabbas the thief, so I thought. Barabbas the murderer, so I thought. Barabbas this barbaric, crazy man who's losing his mind, who's got on a mental institute in a white jacket. Barabbas come out in a white jacket? No. Uh-uh. That's not Barabbas. That's not Barabbas. I, 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 I was bamboozled because I thought that Barabbas was just a common thief. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And Apostle has, has taught us that Barabbas is a scapegoat. And it's true. That God, God, and from God's point of view, this is a type and shadow of what Jesus did on the cross. But I don't want to talk from God's point of view. I want to talk from the people's point of view. Because if you look at Barabbas in retrospect reading the Bible, you'll miss it. 
But from the people, Barabbas was a hero. He was a hero. Barabbas was in jail because the uh, Romans put a golden eagle on top of the temple. Barabbas said, you're not going to play with my God like that. So I'm going to take action. Watch me. I'm going to take action and I'm going to do it my way. Barabbas to the Jews, take your time, Levon, was a hero. Something like a savior. The revelation is in his name. Barabbas, Bar, I know Bar Mitzvah, Bar, son. Abbas, Abba, father. Barabbas is son of the father. So in one corner you got son of the father, and in the other corner you got son of the father. You got to look at it from Jews, the Jews' point of view. They are excited and they're ready because God told us we would get a Messiah. But surely it can't look like him. He says, turn the other cheek. He says, peace, follow peace. It can't be him. Barabbas is ready to take action. Barabbas, Barabbas is with it. He ready to go. You know what I mean? He ready to go. Y'all know them. Y'all know, know them. Some of y'all are. Some, all right. All right. Don't let me step, step into my prophetic. All right. Some, Barabbas, he ready to go. He's about to, he, Barabbas going to get you. Barabbas, Barabbas. And so if I got to choose between follow peace with all men and take action, I'm going to go with Barabbas. And the Bible says that the people say, give us Barabbas. And Pilate goes and washes his hand because Pilate knows that they have chosen another Jesus. Another Jesus, another Jesus, another Jesus. I started to pay attention and I said, "Why? What? another Jesus? Oh, man. Oh, man. Another Jesus. OK. All right. Um, well, Barabbas is his surname. You know, in, in English, our last name, Barabbas, Williams, Whitener, you know, McLean, surname. But his first name is Jesus. They, Pilate knew that they had chosen another Jesus, and that is the scheme toward our faith. If it starts taking too long, if the will has not come to fruition like you want it, if it hasn't manifested in the way that you want it, you still believe in. You don't lose hope in his will. You don't. You don't. Because some of us pass in judgment because there are others that walked away from the church, but there are people in the church that believe in his will but don't believe his way. Mammon comes to offer you another way. Comes to offer you another way. Well, that's enough fussing. The way is Jesus. The way is Jesus. What is faith for? Faith is for the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's boring. I get it. Because faith is being for cars and houses is better. But faith is for the ministry of Jesus Christ. And through the ministry of Jesus Christ, you will receive some of the things that are in God's will and his way. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. That's the prerequisite. And the promise and all of these things. Right? That's the promise. The prerequisite is seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. Here's the scheme. False doctrine comes to tell you that you can bypass his heart and go after his hand. False doctrine says that I'll have you declare things in faith. Because here's the thing. A lot of people are vulnerable because they're newbies. They're just coming into Christ. You know, you get it, right? And then they are, some, a lot of people are living in poverty-stricken times in their lives. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? But you got to make sure that you teach it responsibly because somebody who's in need might hear it and say, I can bypass his heart and go straight to his hand. But the Bible says that we declare things. Oh, I don't abandon the scripture, Jesus. Uh, go to the next one. 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as what you will eat or what you will drink. Nor fool, oh, that's wrong. Go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. Oh, I'm a real word of faith preacher now. Go to Hebrews 10. <laughs> uh, there we go. That's it. Let us draw near with a sincere heart. We already talked about that in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That is key. Stay there. Our bodies washed with pure water. Our bodies washed with pure water. I want to present to you that faith is not by, just by the will. That faith 
is not just by his way, but faith is by the water. Faith is by the water. Faith is by the water. His will, his way, his water. I don't have time because I'm almost out. And I am out to teach you about the, 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 the connection between word and water. Water and word, word and water. Water and word, right? Word and water. Water and word. Many, many, many different innuendos. Many, many different metaphors connecting us to the word and the water. Right? Right? Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Yeah, a living water. The word and the water. I don't have time. The word and the water. The water is the word, and the word is the water. In the beginning, God created, watch me, the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, and the earth was void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. Then God said, let there be. Now, if you know the Bible, you know I skipped the part. I always thought it was weird, Pastor Show, that it goes from the earth being formless and void right to him saying, let there be. There was always a part in the middle that was like, why is this here? The part in the middle, right before he declares his word, listen to me, right before he, I don't get tired, right before he declares his word, right before he lifts his voice and he spins the earth into existence, right before he declares it and names it, it's a little passage that says, and the spirit was hovering over the waters. I'm about, to, I'm about to close. And the spirit was hovering over the waters. The spirit was hovering over the waters. Why before he declares his word? Why before he releases? He releases. The Bible says that he hired the world into existence. Revival, you know, apostle. He hired the world into existence. Right before he releases his word. And he names it and he claims it. The spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. I think the mystery is in Luke 5. In Luke 5, follow me, Jesus is now in the height of his ministry. He's laying hands on the sick. He's healing the, the blind and the, and the lame, the dumb. He's casting out devils. And the Bible says that he's by the lake of Genesaret. He's by the lake. And the people are pressing in. That doesn't mean anything to you because you think of a lake like if he's standing by it, he's on a beach. Uh-uh. This was hundreds of hundreds of feet below sea level. So it wasn't like a beach, but it was more like a cliff. The people are pressing in. In other words, Jesus is, is, is preaching in a stadium. The only problem is, in ancient Eastern culture, there was no microphones. There's no speakers. His body physically cannot speak loud enough for thousands and thousands and thousands of people to hear him. That's the dilemma. What does Jesus do? He says, I'm going to go by this boat. Go get in this boat. And if you think that's worse for, for a solution, he says, push me away in the water. What in the world? The mystery is in, if you're a singer, I'm not, if you're a musician, I am, then you'll know that if you ever want to make your voice go fast and you ever want to make your voice go loud, you got to do it over the water. Over the water. And the spirit was hovering over the, the, the waters. The waters. The waters. Studies say that our words, that our words change the molecular shape of water. It does. But what we don't talk about enough is what water does to our words. Water, the water. You, you got to know that the water, it does not just send your words, but it'll send your words four times faster. That the water, when you, when you speak, the water and the, and the atmosphere takes your words, it traps it, and then it sends it like in a tunnel with force the, over the water, over the water. Your faith has to be by the water. And the problem is we have people naming and claiming things not by the water. And then they're mad when it doesn't come to existence because God is not obligated to provide for your will. But he's obligated to provide for his will, his way, and the water. We declare things in faith over the water. We declare things in faith over the water. I come to, I come to uh, uh, trap, to, to bind your anxiety of just declaring mere things in your soul. But you need to know his will and his way. You got to seek him. You got to seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added. Stand to your feet. I'm done.